Hey guys, this has been a crazy month for me when it comes to my metalworking skills. I took a class in Pueblo, Colorado about casting metal for jewelry. This doesn't directly relate to the ballast scissors, but I've always wanted to cast molten metal, and I have some cool ideas I might use it for in the future. I also went to Autodesk University in Vegas. I learned some cool tips and tricks for Fusion 360, and I got to meet cool people like John Saunders and Mark Carryberry. It was a lot of fun. I like doing this kind of traveling for the sake of learning type of thing, so maybe I'll record it if people are interested more in the future. In the last video I made the buttons and spacers, so all that's left is to make the blades as well as some new pins. I have been debating different designs for the blades in my head. Not the actual blades, but the section at the bottom where the blades interact with each other. I decided to rotate the squares back into the diamond position because I noticed there was more likelihood that the square pin could slide forward into the round groove. The real challenge has been coming up with a mechanism for the button to click up and down. For a while I had assumed the simplest method would be to drill a hole in the side of the blades and insert a spring, ball, and screw. The spring would push the ball into detents in the pins. However, an eighth inch thick blade doesn't give me a lot of room for all these parts. Then I decided I wanted to make the scissors thinner, and so the blades became thinner. I became even less confident when I saw the size of some of the springs and balls I had chosen in person. I also want to minimize the number of parts in general and it'd be nice to make everything in one orientation on the blades so I don't even have to rotate the blades 90 degrees and do a drilling operation like I had done in the past. And so I'd been working on for a while playing with the idea of doing something like a frame lock knife. And so that's what I'm going to try to do in this video. I think I found a good place that I can cut a groove and so I have a little tab that can work as a small spring. But I need a way for this small tab to also act like the detent ball so that it can interact with some detents in the pins. I want to add a little bit of a chamfer to this tab and I was having a hard time figuring out a tool small enough that would work. I found a small 8th inch 60 degree chamfer tool that would be able to fit into the space and cut the whole length of the tab and provide a nice transition for the blade to move up and down. I could also get a 120 degree chamfer tool to do the opposite shape in the pins. With this figured out, I decided to make some blades. I started with mild steel, but eventually I want to use a real heat treatable, corrosion resistant, nice blade steel, or even something more aesthetic like a Damascus looking steel. So I start by drilling holes in the first stop as usual, and I cut out as much of the grooves as I can in this first stop. Then I can clamp it to the fixture. After finishing the contour around the blades, I can then use a 16th inch end mill to finish cutting out the groove forming the tab. You can actually see that there is a little bit of a flex in the... T oh. Okay, there might be a problem. This mild steel is pretty soft. There isn't much springiness to the tab. It can just bend away and stay where it bent. And so when it was being machined, it bent and got in the way of where the end mill was when it came back around. I put a bunch of metals from McMaster into an Excel sheet. Here you can see the different hardness of different material. Spring steel is actually harder than I thought it was. It's almost up where blade steels are. That's not the only factor when it comes to springiness, but I was actually a little worried that even if my idea for a button click mechanism worked, it might end up that after I hardened the blades, it would be too hard to even move. But knowing this, I think it might be workable. I was inspired by Go Custom Knives machining a knife out of pre-hardened steel. When I was looking at metals on McMaster, I saw that I could get pre-hardened 4140 steel. It's not as hard as blade steel, but I'm not sure if I'm brave enough to machine that anyway. But I'm hoping 
that maybe if I order some, it's hard enough to at least see if there's some more springiness in the tabs. But before that gets here, I thought I'd try a little bit more with the mild steel I already had. I made some adjustments to the tool path so that it wouldn't even touch the areas on the inside of the diamond holes where it had already been machined so there's less risk of it hitting where the tab bent away. These blades I machined were just to try to dial things in. When I ordered this stock originally, I also ordered some pre-ground stock for the exact thickness I needed. I then machined some blades out of this and tried to make sure they were perfect. and they came out pretty good. The mild steel may be soft, but I still managed to cut myself pretty good trying to deburr it. It isn't actually sharpened in any way that's useful though. Now I gotta make some pins. The process is mostly the same, except I used square stock that's stainless instead of brass. I turned down some round sections and I tap both ends. But then I need to machine the detents. I came up with as simple a fixture as possible. I made a pocket and a hole I could tap. Then I put in the pins and tighten the screw. Finally I can cut a couple 120 degree grooves. I did a bunch of passes just to play it safe since this small tool is probably meant for chamfering the side edges of parts, not grooving. Here it is assembled. First of all, it's really heavy. You can see that it's multiple times heavier than my other knives. Someone on Instagram was asking me about there being too much weight bias towards the blades because it has two blades instead of one. With the current stainless steel handles, it is still very much handle biased. We'll see how the balance changes when I make titanium handles. I think that the level of play is fine for doing tricks or whatever but the slop when in the locked or scissor positions is too high. It is pretty stiff though. It took a bit of effort to get the pins through the holes. And I would have thought that once the tabs were bent out of the way for the pins to slide through, they would be pretty much out of the way and the stiffness would go away along with the nice click I want. But there is enough spring to the steel that it, the tabs kind of stay a little stuck out, but it still springs in and out of the pin detents. So I guess this is a success. I spent some time just playing around with it so that maybe the parts would wear into each other better. I also wished I used the 332nd round over instead of the 16th round over on the handles. It just feels a little bit too boxy when manipulating the handles. And it, you know, I was trying to avoid getting pinched and the large flat sides make getting pinched worse, which, because it's so heavy, isn't fun. I got the 4140 in the mail, and so let's go ahead and make some blades out of that and see if it's any better for the whole springiness, or even if it seems like it's a better blade. The speeds and feeds didn't have to be changed much at all. It really was a breeze to machine despite being harder. And yeah, the tabs are springier, and the tolerances are even tighter on this one. The slop is a little closer to what I would be okay with. There's something a bit finicky with the button though. I have some ideas that I want to try to improve the design, but I think I should try to test things in a more small scale. So for example, I messed around with this idea I had of 
as small of possible click mechanism I could come up with, which is basically just using a really small snap ring or circlip or retaining ring, whatever you want to call it, and some grooves in a pin. And I want to see if it's possible to use this as another way to do a button click mechanism. But I didn't have to make an entire perfect balisong mechanism and machine all the parts and stuff to test this. And it's good I didn't because the first time I tried it, I uh, had way too steep of angles on the grooves and so it didn't work. Another more small scale test I'll call it is I just got a block of aluminum and experimented with a rough handle shape with a new design. I had seen some things in the past that had shapes made by dimpling a bunch of holes in a pattern. I wanted to try this, but I wasn't sure the least inconvenient way I could do this onto a concave or convex surface like my handles. But then I figured out that I could just make a opposite shape and just have it set to drill a bunch of holes into this shape and just have the drill end at the hole bottom, maybe minus another five or ten thou or something. And so I was able to make a few different iterations, trying different sizes of uh, end mill and how the spacing was and come up with this pretty cool pattern design. But I was able to do this much faster because I didn't even bother to do the other side. Well, that's all I've been experimenting with for now. Thank you for sticking around with me. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that, and uh, we'll see what I come up with for another video in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.